Did your red HDMI monitor stop working suddenly? You tried to change the cable and connect it to a different computer and still you cannot get it to work? I may have the solution for you. In my case, my monitor stopped recognized correctly after a pyro loss. Suddenly, I cannot change the resolution of the monitor anymore. Even if I try to force the desired resolution through a video control panel, cannot get it to work. So what happened? It seems like the EDID get corrupted in the power loss. The EDID stands for Extended Display Identification Data and is basically a data structure inside your monitor that holds information like vendor, serial number, support resolution, etc. The basic information that we're interested in is the header who is a fixed sequence of 8 bytes and the checksum who we can find by summing all the 128 bytes and divided by 256. The remainder of this division must be zero. The ADID also contains other information that we're not interested in. Now we must recover the EDID that the Windows keep in the registry. Press Windows R and then type Recedit and press OK. In the register editor, you must navigate its local machine, system, current control, enum, display, choose your display, mine is Samsung 07D6, choose the only folder, device parameters, and then EDID. You can use that so you can recover your monitor. Save that information by right clicking on the device parameter and then click export. Choose a name and click save. After you save this, you can open it with a text editor. Now we have this information secured. We must boot into Linux in order to dump the EDID saved in the display. You must create a Linux bootable USB stick. So search for how to create a Linux bootable USB stick and follow the instructions. The distribution that I recommend is Debian, Ubuntu and Elementary OS. After you boot into the Linux distribution, you can try to check if your display works. In my case, you cannot find it, but it's okay, we can still dump the data. Get root access by typing sudo su and load the i2c dev module into the kernel by typing modprobe i2c dev. Update your repositories by app get update and then install i2c tools by typing app get install i2c tools. After the installation is complete, we must find how many passes are available in the system by typing i2c detect minus l. In my case, I have 12 available passes. And now we must find what addresses are available in every bus. So I will use this command to do that. So it's coming. It will take a couple of seconds. And it's done. Let's check for the address uh, 0x50. Here we find it in the first device. And in the fifth device, and no elsewhere really. So let's check the first device with the i2c dump command. Address z bus 0 address 0x50. Zero we can see the name of the display. It's digital. It's my first display. So let's check the second bus. Here we can see the name of my monitor. It's the Samsung 350. Very good. So this is the data that we interested in. And we can dump that with that command. After you dump the data, you must either mail to yourself or transfer with some device like a USB stick. 
it's a good idea of course to verify that is okay with the cat command it seems everything okay in my case let's go back to windows and see what we have until now so here is the edid from registry here is the edid from the monitor dump so we have dumped more data that we need for so we I ignore this data here i convert from hexadecimals to decimals in order to sum every row and then sum every sum so i can find the total sum of the first 128 bytes and then i mode that with 256 i get 26 this should be zero and here is the difference between the registry and the monitor dump is this three bytes that is in the first eight bytes that if you remember is the header from the wikipedia article here you can see it so i must change the three bytes to ff and i will do that now so i can see if the checksum becomes zero and it does so that's good news i can go back to the linux distro and change these three bytes and see if the monitor works now before you can write to your monitor there is a possibility that you may need to go to your service menu and here is my sequence to go to the service menu you must search for the service manual and your model number in order to find this information for your monitor and here is how it looks in my monitor all right let's go to linux to change the bytes that we identify as a fault now in my case i need to change three bytes here is the command that you need to type s2c set minus y your bus number 0x50 is the address of the bus the 0x01 it's my address for the fault byte and 0x ff is the value that i must add and i check if and it's correct very good very good let's change the other two bytes that is faulty all right let's check again and i successfully have restored the edid of my monitor let's go back to windows and check if it works and success i can change now the resolution i see the model number all right it works for me i hope it works for you bye